Rose BTV this week? Me? Yeah, you. Yeah. Hey. Come on in. This is young saucy B. Hey, hey you, pass me the rock. Uh, the boys basketball team season just came to an end. We're doing a quick recap here at HF and uh, our cameras were there. Let's take a look. Last Friday, March 8th, our HF Boys basketball team went up against the Simeon Wolverines in the Super Sectional game. This was a winner go home situation. The winning team would proceed to the next round while the losing team's season would sadly conclude. The stands were packed an hour before action. This was the game to see. The jump ball went up at seven and the game was on. The Vikings struck first and carried this energy well into the second quarter, leading 17 to 11. It looked as though we'd walk away with the win, but after two unanswered threes, the six-point lead disappeared and the boys ended the half tied at 20. This trend would continue all the way to the final buzzer as shots just couldn't find the bottom of the basket for the Vikings. And on defense, they couldn't stop the threes from pouring in. The Wolverines took the victory 58-43. Trace Williams was the leading scorer with 12 points. This was a solid season for the Vikings as they finished the regular season 23-8 and and coming just two games shy of the state final. I feel like we played really well this season. We didn't finish how we wanted to finish, but I think we shocked a lot of people and uh, shocked ourselves at some point because we played better than what people expected. Uh, I mean, we had a pretty decent season. We should have beat Simeon, but I mean, we wasn't hitting shots and everything. But, I mean, next year, we kind of work hard and everything. We'll be like a good team state contender, most definitely. There's definitely something to look forward to next season. As for the seniors, good luck on the next level. For VTV, I'm tonight and The boys track team is pretty good. One of the best in the state, as a matter of fact. We're gonna take a look at them and how they're looking to avenge their second place finish in state last year. Round one, fight. HF is a record-breaking school, and yet another record was broken when senior high jumper Madison Myrick broke the 34-year-old girls' indoor high jump record. Previously held by Laura Elfner, Madison jumped an astounding 5'7 and broke the school record at the HF ABC Showcase. Madison elaborates on her feelings about breaking the record. Uh, it was the ABC invite, and I was really sick. Like, I woke up, my nose all stuffy, couldn't breathe, and... Like, I wasn't expecting much that day, but I still had to compete, and I was doing high jump and long jump. And I believe that I long jump first and PR by, like, a lot. So I was really excited about that, and I wasn't expecting to go 5'7 that day, but I ended up doing it anyways, and I was just really happy and ready to see, like, where the rest of the season took me. 
The record, set in 1985, held strong for over three decades after the record was set. Elfner discusses that monumental experience and what it taught her. Um, I remember I mentioned Debbie Hinchcliffe, who was the head coach. She was across the field, and she must have known that I broke the record. You know, of course you're doing this when you're when you land it, right? And um, Coach Hinchcliffe had a whistle. She could just, with her lips, without you know, she had this super loud whistle that you could hear way across the field. And after I made the jump, I could hear her whistle from across the field, and it just, it was, it was the best. Work hard because everybody has a talent. Whatever your talent is, um, you still need to develop that talent, talent and uh, you can work even harder to make that talent better. So you can't just rely on your natural ability um, to do whatever it is you decide to do. Um, it's, it's really the hard work that gets you over the bar and, and, and lets you raise the bar literally to higher levels. The high jump torch seems to have been passed to Madison. She's hoping to break Elfner's outdoor high jump record as well. While the record may be broken, the legacy of Laura Elfner still lives on. For VTV, I'm Langston Johnson. The gymnastics team had their lone home meet this season, and our cameras were there to catch it. Let's take a look. Gymnastics, it's, it means a lot to me. I mean, I did it three years ago, and honestly, it changed my life. I really, I really wouldn't give anything up for it. Cameron Collins is, is doing really well this year in his senior year. Um, really cleaning up his form on events and uh, we're really going to shoot for Macon State on at least one event. Uh, Rings was really great tonight, 8.0 and his highest uh, score I think of his career. My performance was actually pretty good. I got an 8.0 for Rings and overall I think I did pretty good. I think we're making improvements every day. Um, we have eight guys on the team this year, so it's up a little bit from what we had last year. And um, you know, all you can do is take one meet at a time, one day at a time, just continue to work hard and try and improve your routines each time. So I think they're doing that. As a team, we honestly would like to have a bigger team. If anybody would like to come out for gymnastics, please come out. The girls' soccer team is off to a great start here. They've played two games already, and Ben Hamer got the coverage. Let's go to it. Tuesday, March 12th, the varsity girls' soccer team had their first game of the season against Layden High School. After only losing one senior this offseason, they have high expectations for this year. The girls got off to a hot start going up 3-0 within the first 20 minutes of the game. The girls never slowed down, getting an impressive 6-1 win in their first contest of the season. The Vikings were led by keeper Kennedy Jones, Caroline Johnson, Shallon Malfeo, and Abby Rosales, who had a hat trick. Here's what Captain Caroline Johnson had to say after her two-goal performance. You know, I think for our first game, we did really well. Uh, we came out with a lot of energy and a lot of excitement, and I think that did well for us because we were making lots of runs, we were passing, which was, was a really big goal for us this year. We want to be a possession-based team, which is something that we're really working towards, and I think that we can really achieve. And I think that our goals for this year are working out for us so far. We won 6-1, to one, and hopefully we can end the tournament with playing at Toyota Park, so I'm excited. 
Make sure to keep an eye out for the girls' next game as their PepsiCo tournament continues. On Saturday, March 9th, a few students from the VBC crew went out to Leisure Lake in Joliet to support Special Olympics Illinois in a national polar plunge. The plunge began around 12 noon. There were lots of groups and organizations that chose to participate in raising awareness for special education. Brian McLaughlin, a special education educator here at HF, Jakima Kimbrough, and Kira Gilbert, two VBC staff members, speak on specifics of the Polar Plunge and what they gained from the experience. So the Polar Plunge was, uh, it was a pretty credible experience. Um, the, the amount of people, I was really shocked by the amount of people that were there. It's such a great event uh, to support such an awesome program that uh, Special Olympics has here in the state of Illinois. So for me to be part of that was pretty awesome. Uh, the water was incredibly cold. Uh, it was uh, very cold out. The water was very cold. Uh, and it took a while to gain feeling back into my legs and feet. It was my first time doing the polar plunge. It wasn't what I expected, but I had fun. There's a lot of people that came out. It was for a good cause, so I'm glad I did it. And uh, more people should do it next year. The water was extremely cold. It was actually colder than I thought it would be, and I actually wore a lot of clothing into the water, so I didn't realize that uh, that actually kind of made it worse. But I just felt really good about the whole thing, donating, just being there, um, doing something positive that you know affects someone else and not me for once. Before the plunge began, earlier in the day, there were plenty of other activities to participate in to raise awareness as well. Activities such as marathons and the donut dash. Although the plunge was the biggest event held on Saturday. Here's some footage of our VBC staff members plunging into Leisure Lake. many people, the polar plunge may seem like a silly thing to do, but our crew and a few other Vikings thought it was an amazing experience. They had realized that they were truly freezing for a reason. For VTV, I'm Abrea Smith. Unfortunately, that's all we have for this week's episode of the VTV Friday Show. We urge everybody to tune in this Saturday at 11 to VTV's coverage of the Unified Special Olympics State Basketball Championships and of course, we wish our Viking Unified team the absolute best at state this week. I'm Kenneth Powell. That's all we have this week. And um, we'll see you back here next week at the same time and uh, same place.